All right, guys, you can see it's kind of a gloomy day uh, behind me here in uh, in Pensacola. And anyways, here's questions for the day. We're going to have an interesting one about vitamins and then as well as one about kind of behavioral health. So, um, you know, despite it being gloomy outside, if we don't stop, it's my day off and I'm here to make some questions for you. So um, hope it was helpful, guys. She is at increased risk for vitamin A deficiency because absorption of vitamin A requires presence of which the following. All right, so we know it's some type of a uh, vitamin A deficiency due to something. Um, a 14 year old girl has a diet that mainly consists of tomatoes, green vegetables, pastas, rice, and skim milk. She has an increased risk for vitamin A deficiency because the absorption of vitamin A requires presence of which the following. And again, our answer choices are A, protein, B, hemoglobin, C, triglycerides, D, choline, and E, uh, pyruvate kinase. Now, you know, this is one of those vitamin, uh, vitamin questions. So, you know, we know that A is part of the A, D, E, K, right? And what are these? These are, as we know, fat soluble, okay? And so what, what does that really mean? It, it means basically, essentially that it uh, accumulates uh, in the fat. Now, you might already know the answer to this, but when I was kind of studying, studying for this exam, if it wasn't specifically in the uh, step one book, I did not know it because uh, this is more of a knowledge thing. So again, that's why we do as many questions as we can. So to have a fat-soluble vitamin be absorbed, we need something. Is it protein, hemoglobin, triglycerides, choline, or pyruvate kinase? Well, we do know that A is part of the fat-soluble vitamins. So which of these would you say, if you didn't know, you know, which is going to happen a lot on the step exam, if you didn't know and had to take a guess that a fat-soluble vitamin may need which of the following, and the correct answer is going to be C, triglycerides. It, you know, you need some type of oil, some type of fat to make that absorption. Now, let's take a look at these ADEK. What do you really need to know uh, from this other, other than you need a little bit of triglyceride or fat? Well, we know vitamin A, uh, teratogenic, right? Teratogenic. What's that medication that, say, teenagers sometimes uh, use for acne that uh, has a vitamin A mass doses kind of thing? It's going to be isoretinoin. Iso, isoretinoin? Well, basically, it's trade name, the yeah, Accutane. Okay? And they're going to ask you a question potentially well, you know, a teenager comes in, they, they were started on medication, they, they want to be started on medication for acne, that's teratogenic. What test should you do before prescribing this? And you better uh, you better say a pregnancy test, okay? Beta HCG. So again, vitamin A, uh, you know, teratogenic. Uh, I think of Accutane, isoretinoin, and then make sure you have pregnancy test for the person uh, for the young lady if it's if it's a female. Now, vitamin D, guys. Watch the video that I did for vitamin D deficiencies. It tells, talks about everything. Very important question. Um, I could summarize it here, but again, the video, I'll try to, I'll try to link it uh, to where you can click on it later. Uh, but you got to know that video. It's one of the better ones that I've actually done that, that I was kind of, say, proud of, per se. Now, vitamin E. This is guy, he's kind of overlooked, right? Fat soluble, yes, but this was actually on my step one exam, believe it or not. I remember it because I, uh, I remember studying it like a day or two before, and uh, I got a question on vitamin E. And, you know, essentially it talks about... It's a, it's a, it's something that's actually in the step one book. Increased fragility of erythrocytes. Okay, uh, so it could potentially lead to hemolytic anemia, and that's where the question actually went. They were talking about uh, it was some type of blood hemolytic anemia, and they're saying which of the following could, uh, you know, deficiency or something like that, uh, you know, could attribute to this decreased fragility of the erythrocyte. And I'm hoping the correct answer, you know, of course, I don't know my results other than, uh, than a pass, uh, uh, passing score. The correct answer is going to be E. So no for E, vitamin E, increased fragility of the erythrocytes, among other things, um, could lead to hemoly hemolytic anemia if it's deficient, okay? And of course, vitamin K, you know, this guy plays a big factor. You know, he's necessary uh, for the clotting factor, right? Uh, clotting factor 2... I believe it's two, seven, um, nine, ten, protein C, protein S. Okay. Um, 
not found. And also another little fact, obviously it's not found in breast milk. Okay. Uh, all these other answer choices, protein, hemoglobin, choline, pervy kidneys, I just kind of made those up for the most part. But again, fat soluble, make sure you get a little oil, little triglycerides for the absorption piece. This girl's diet did not consist uh, of that, right? Didn't consist of that, and that there's for, therefore she's deficient and, and potentially could have a deficiency in these fat soluble vitamins. But it's when you see a question like this, attack the uh, the extra little things, okay? Because this is where the educational piece uh, comes from, okay? Next question. It reads. Uh, she has an outburst of anger, whether she is intoxicated or not, which of the following is the most likely personality disorder? Okay, so good, personality disorder stuff. And are they antisocial, dependent, paranoid, narcissistic, or borderline? All right, the question reads, a 35-year-old woman presents to the emergency department after consuming 25 2 milligram tablets of lorazepam, also known as Ativan. She reports that her boyfriend threatened to leave her and she had a, quote, panic attack she does acknowledge to daily use of methamphetamine and consumes alcoholic beverages two to three times, uh, two to three drinks of whiskey, comma, mainly on the weekends. She has, she has outbursts of anger, whether she is intoxicated or not, okay? Which of the following is most likely personality disorder? All right, so we got the antisocial, dependent, paranoid, narcissistic, and borderline. Well, what, do we, what do we know about these? Well, you better be jumping on when, it's, when it comes to antisocial, what, how old they got to be? Greater than 18, because if they're less than 18, antisocial, you're just Mr. Conduct Disorder, right? It's conduct disorder below 18. Antisocial, you got to be, uh, you know, above 18. And antisocial is pervasive, pattern, distrust, violation of the rights of others. You know, they're just bad to the bone, and, and they just break the law. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm seeing patients, I'll kind of look them up online and see if there's a arrest record that kind of dates back. Of course, it doesn't have when they were a youth, but I can typically get an idea as an adult. Uh, but again, to, for antisocial, typically needs to be present in childhood. A lot of deceit, manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. Again, just bad to the bone. Uh, and then conduct disorder is bad to the bone, but below 18. Um, okay. Uh, dependent personality. You know, that's someone who obviously, you know, desires, they need somebody, um, which this person has those tendencies, it looks like, but it wouldn't explain this whole outburst of anger and, and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's a possible, but not a strong possible at this point. Paranoid person. Well, if you're, if you got a paranoid disorder, personality disorder, and remember the key word is disorder on this because, uh, and I say we all have traits of these, but you know, Everybody can have a tendency of, of something, you know, on, on these, but when it's pervasive, when it's excessive and it affects your interaction with others or your job, you know, and, and such, then you tack on the word disorder because it's an issue. So a paranoid disorder, again, per pervasive distrust, you're suspicious of others. You know, this, this, this person in this question is really not suspicious or anything like that, um, but a paranoid person kind of sees everything in the most negative light. And that's not really what we're seeing here. And as far as antisocial, this person really didn't, you know, technically, they're not violating the, the rights of others, at least not within the, this question sim. So I'm not really feeling the whole antisocial thing. Is it uh, narcissistic? Well, remember, narcissistic is a person who's, um, you know, it's got this the grandiose thinking. You know, they, they like the admiration, uh, lack the empathy. And despite this person's flaws in this question stem, I don't see anything, no evidence that says they're grandiose, that they need the admiration and lack the empathy. So I'm not really sold on that one. And of course, now we're down to border, you know, borderline personality. And you better be jumping all over that. The step exams love borderline personality. Um, you won't love it so much in real life. But so borderline personality, again, cluster B, they, they call it. But don't worry about having to, having to kind of uh, differentiate in, into the different clusters. But it's basically a, an unstable sense of self. Um, you know, they can go from zero to 60 miles an hour, but it's really short-lived, okay? And that's what they're talking about. She has these outbursts of anger, whether she's intoxicated or not. Um, you know, difficulty in, as they call it, interpersonal relationships. Okay? Uh, remember, they have uh, black white thinking you know it's kind of either things black and white it's either you're over here or over here there's no there's no middle ground um you know with that 
Um, so again, that's that's uh, borderline, and they like to use that. What's that one thing they like to do per se in the book is splitting, right? Getting people uh, kind of against each other, and you can yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that. You know, they'll tell one person this, and then they'll go tell another person that, and get people thinking about each other is uh, kind of against each other on that. So, thirty-five year old woman reportedly has panic attacks. They kind of, kind of throw this drug stuff in there as a as a uh, distractor for the most part, but because later they say she has outbursts of anger, whether she's intoxicated or not. But it was in the setting of a relationship issue where she was being, you know, either they were leaving her or she perceived they were leaving her. So, but what I want you to know also for the uh, step exam or these is this one too, okay? Because they always it seems like they always ask this, and people remember when they had it on their exam. Avoidant versus schizoid, okay? Remember. An avoidant personality, they want to be accepted, okay? They want to be accepted, but they fear, okay? They just fear the groups. They fear being rejected, okay? But the key is the avoidant person wants to be accepted, whereas the schizoid, um, as I say, they just prefer to be alone, okay? And they're okay with it, okay? They prefer solitary, um, and it doesn't matter that they, they, they don't feel like they have to or want to have friends per se or interactions with others. They, they kind of detach from uh, social relationships. So the key is avoidance, desire it. Schizoids, meh, uh, give or take, not really my thing, okay? And the way I usually remember that is I always think with the avoidant AV, I think a guy's name is Avery and say Avery works in your office. Avery wants to be part of the group. He's just really shy and has a fear of being rejected from everybody, so... Make sure you know those guys. But um, again, answer choice on this one, borderline personality. Hope it was helpful, guys.